welcome 10th board exams are soon approaching and the last few months are the most crucial ones for your preparation anyway it is not easy to prepare for an exam that is probably the first challenge you will face among the many other challenges that you will face later but the good part is that you just have enough time to be prepared and you can easily score 90 plus with little over a few months left for the exam here are some useful important five mark questions which came in the previous year exams it can help you prepare yourself for the exam in faster and better way Question number one, explain any five steps taken by the central and state governments to improve Indian agriculture after independence. Or describe any four institutional reforms introduced by the government of India in the interest of the farmers. Or the government of India has introduced various institutional and technological reforms to improve agriculture in the 1980s and 1990s. Support the statement with examples. We will go to the answer. Various initiatives taken by the central and state governments to ensure the increase in agricultural production after independence are as follows. A comprehensive land development program was initiated. Collectivism, consolidation of holdings, cooperation and abolition of zamindari system etc were given priority to bring about institutional reforms in the country after independence. Land reforms were the main focus of the first five-year plan. The Green Revolution based on the use of package technology and the White Revolution or Operation Flared were some of the strategies initiated to improve Indian agriculture. Establishment of Grameen Banks, Cooperative Societies and Banks for providing loan facilities to the farmers at lower rates of interest, provision of crop insurance against drought, floods, cyclone and fire were introduced. Minimum support price policy, provisions for crop insurance, subsidy on agricultural inputs and resources such as power and fertilizers, establishment of Grameen Banks, Kisan Credit Card and Personal Accident Insurance Scheme are some of the reforms brought by the government. The government announced minimum support price, remunerative and procurement prices to reduce exploitation, establishment of Indian Council of Agricultural Research, agricultural universities, veterinary services and animal breeding centers, horticulture development and weather forecast etc. were given priority for improving Indian agriculture. Technological reforms, high yielding variety seeds, chemical fertilizers, pesticides were provided, methods of irrigation modernized, latest agricultural equipments introduced, special weather bulletins and agricultural program for farmers were introduced on radio and television. Next question. Write four geographical requirements each for the growth of tea and sugar cane. The following are the geographical conditions required for the production of sugar cane. It is a tropical as well as subtropical crop. It needs hot and humid climate with temperature of 21 degrees Celsius to 27 degrees Celsius. It requires annual rainfall between 75 cm and 100 cm. It can grow on a variety of soil. Describe the conditions required for the cultivation of tea. Name two major tea producing states of India. Tea is an important beverage crop. The following are the conditions required for its cultivation. The tea plant grows in tropical and subtropical regions which have deep, fertile and well-drained soil rich in humus and organic matter. Tea bushes require warm and moist frost-free climate all through the year. 
Tea bushes require frequent showers throughout the year to ensure continuous growth of tender leaves. It needs abundant, cheap and skilled labor. Two major tea producing states are Assam and West Bengal. Next question. Wheat and rice farming in India are fairly different from each other. Support the statement with five suitable examples. Or name the two most important staple food crops in India. Mention the geographical conditions required for their growth. The two most important staple food crops in India are rice and wheat. The geographical conditions required for the growth of rice are as follows. Rice is a kharif crop and requires high temperature above 25 degrees Celsius. It requires high humidity for its growth. It requires annual rainfall above 100 cm. The geographical conditions required for the growth of wheat are as follows. It is a rabi crop and needs cool growing season. It requires bright sunshine at the time of ripening. It also requires 50 to 70 centimeter of annual rainfall well distributed over the growing season. Next question. Suggest any five measures to enhance the agricultural production in India. Agriculture is an important economic activity in our country. I would like to suggest the following measures to enhance the agricultural production in India. Each district and block can be made self-sufficient in agricultural production. If the government provides proper agricultural infrastructure, irrigation facilities, electricity, etc. Loans can be provided at lower interest rates to cultivators. The use of latest techniques can be encouraged. Instead of concentrating only on rice or wheat, the food crop with a better growth potential in that particular area must be encouraged. Attracting foreign investment in agriculture and also free trade in grains will not only increase agricultural production but will also create massive employment and reduce poverty in rural areas. Farmers should diversify their cropping pattern from cereals to high value crops. Next question. Mention the geographical conditions required for the growth of cotton along with any four cotton producing states or what are the two cotton producing states of North India? Describe four geographical conditions required for the growth of cotton. Cotton is a kharif crop. India is believed to be the original home of the cotton plants. The geographical conditions required for the growth of cotton are as follows. Cotton grows in the drier parts of the black cotton soil of the Deccan Plateau. It is a kharif crop. Cotton seeds uh, need high temperature, light rainfall, 210 frost free days and bright sunshine for its growth. It requires 6 to 8 months to grow. Major cotton producing states are Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Karnataka. Next question. Distinguish between primitive subsistence farming and intensive subsistence farming or Write main, main characteristics of slash and burn agriculture or write main characteristics of primitive subsistence farming. Answer is this type of farming is practiced in few pockets of India on small patches of land using primitive tools and family or community labor. Farmers clear a patch of land and produce cereals and other food crops to sustain their families. When the soil fertility decreases, the farmers shift and clear a fresh patch of land for cultivation. This type of shifting allows nature to replenish the fertility of the soil through natural processes. 
Land productivity is low as the farmer does not use fertilizers or other modern inputs. Next question. Explain any four features of intensive subsistence farming in India or what is intensive subsistence farming? Write three features of intensive subsistence farming. Intensive subsistence farming is practiced in areas of high density of population where pressure of population is high on agricultural land. The following are the three features of this type of farming. It is labor intensive farming. High doses of biochemical inputs and irrigation are used for obtaining higher production. Farm size is small and uneconomical due to the division of land. Farmers take maximum output from the limited land. Farmers do not have any alternative source of livelihood. Thus there is enormous pressure on agricultural land. Next question is Define plantation agriculture. Explain any four characteristics of plantation agriculture. Plantation is a type of commercial farming where a single crop is grown on a large area. The following are the four characteristics of plantation. Plantations have very large areas. Capital intensive inputs are used in plantations. Migrant laborers are used by plantations. All the produce is used as raw material in respective industries. The development of plantations is the result of a well-developed network of transport and communication connecting plantations to markets. Next question. How has irrigation changed the cropping pattern in many regions of India? Explain with examples. Irrigation has changed the cropping pattern of many regions with farmers shifting to water intensive and commercial crops. Due to the success of the green revolution in Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh and parts of Rajasthan, states have started growing rabi crops like wheat, barley, peas and gram. Paddy has become an important crop of Punjab and Haryana. In states like Assam, West Bengal and Orissa, Three crops of paddy are grown in a year. The development of canal irrigation and tube wells has made it possible to grow rice in areas of less rainfall such as Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh and parts of Rajasthan. The use of modern inputs like high yielding variety seeds, fertilizers and irrigation has contributed to high production of maize. Next question, explain rubber cultivation in India under the following herds. Importance, geographical conditions and any two rubber producing states. Importance, rubber is an Im important industrial raw material. Tires, tubes of vehicles and other rubber products are made from natural rubber. Geographical conditions, it is an equitable crop which is grown in tropical and subtropical areas. It requires moist and humid climate with temperature above 25 degrees Celsius and rainfall above 200 centimeter. Two rubber producing states. It is mainly grown in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Garo Hills of Meghalaya. Next question. Explain rice cultivation in India under the following herds. Temperature rainfall, agricultural season and major producing areas. Temperature. Rice requires high temperature of above 25 degrees Celsius. Rainfall. It requires high humidity with an annual rainfall above 100 cm. In the areas of less rainfall, irrigation is essential. Agricultural season. It is a kharif crop which is grown with the onset of monsoon and is harvested in September to October. Major producing areas. Rice is cultivated in the plains of North and Northeastern India, coastal areas and the Deltaic regions. 
development of canal irrigation and tube wells have made it possible to grow rice in areas of low rainfall such as Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh and parts of Rajasthan. Next question, explain any five features of Indian agriculture. Indian agriculture is mainly of intensive subsistence type. It is mainly practiced in areas of high population pressure on land. It is labor intensive farming where high doses of biochemical inputs and irrigation are used for obtaining high yields. Farmers continue to take maximum output from the limited land in the absence of alternate source of livelihood, which leads to enormous pressure on agricultural land. The right of inheritance has led to division of land among successive generations and rendered the size of land holdings uneconomical. Next question, explain any five characteristics of commercial farming in India. The following are the five characteristics of commercial farming in India. In this, crops are mainly grown for commercial purposes. It is practiced on large pieces of land on scientific and commercial lines. In this type of agriculture, machines and modern technology are used. The main characteristics of commercial farming is the use of high doses of modern agricultural inputs like high yielding variety seeds, chemical fertilizers, insecticides and pesticides in order to obtain higher productivity. The degree of commercialization of agriculture varies from one region to another. For example, rice is a commercial crop in Punjab and Haryana, but in Odisha it is a subsistence crop. Plantation is also a type of commercial farming where a single crop is grown on a large area. Plantations cover large areas using capital intensive inputs with the help of migrant laborers. In India, tea, coffee, rubber, sugarcane and banana are important plantation crops. Next question, agriculture and industry are complementary to each other. Justify the statement. Agriculture and industry are complementary to each other in the following ways. Agro-based industries in India have given a major boost to agriculture by raising its productivity. Industry has contributed to agriculture by using the implements like irrigation pumps, fertilizers, insecticides, pesticides, plastic and PVC pipes, machines, tools, sprinkles and the drip irrigation system. Thus development and competitiveness and manufacturing industry has not only assisted agriculturalists in increasing their productivity but also made production process very efficient. In the present day world of globalization, industry needs to be more efficient and competitive. Today, we are not only self-sufficient in agriculture but our farmers are able to compete with other farmers in the world. Today, we are able to produce goods for international market. Next question. Why is the growth rate in agriculture decelerating? How did the government of India make efforts to modernize agriculture? Explain. The growth rate in agriculture is decelerating or reducing due to the following reasons. Reduction in public investment in agriculture, especially for irrigation, power, rural roads, etc. Subsidy on fertilizers has decreased, leading to increase in the cost of production. Reduction in import of agricultural goods, lack of employment in agriculture and erratic nature of monsoon rainfall. To modernize agriculture, the government of India has taken concerted efforts like the following. Setting up of Indian Council of Agricultural Research, setting up of agricultural universities, veterinary services and animal breeding centers, horticulture development, research and development in the field of meteorology and weather forecast and improvement of rural infrastructure. Next question. Distinguish between intensive subsistence farming and commercial farming. Intensive subsistence farming. In this type of farming, production is mainly for self-consumption. It is practiced in areas of high population pressure on land. It is labor-intensive farming. In this, uh, high doses of biochemical inputs and irrigations 
are used for obtaining higher production. Farmers take maximum output from the limited land by raising 2 to 3 crops in a year from the same land that is multiple cropping is practiced. Commercial farming. In this type of agriculture, crops are mainly grown for commercial purposes. It is practiced on large pieces of land on scientific and commercial lines. In this type of agriculture, machines and modern technology are used. There is higher use of modern agricultural inputs, for example, high yielding variety seeds, fertilizers, irrigation etc. are used to obtain higher yields and production. The degree of commercialization varies from one region to another. Rice is a commercial crop in Punjab, while in Orissa it is subsistence crop, for example, plantation agriculture. Next question. Which is the second most important cereal crop of India? Write the geographical conditions required for its growth and name two major zones of wheat growth and name six major states of wheat production. Wheat is the second most important cereal crop of India. It is the main food crop. The geographical conditions required are cool and moist growing season, bright sunshine at the time of ripening, Rainfall 50 to 75 cm evenly distributed over the growing season. Loamy soil is best for its growth. Two important wheat growing zones in India are the Ganga Sutlej Plains in the northwest and black soil region of the Deccan. The major wheat producing states are Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. Next question, which is the most important food crop of India? What is its position in world production? Or name the main food crop of Kharif season. What is India's position in the world with regard to its production? Write the rainfall and temperature requirements for the growth of this crop. Name four major regions of rice cultivation. Name four states which produce irrigated rice. Answer. Rice is the most important food crop of India. India holds second position in rice production after China. For rice cultivation, high temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and above and high humidity with annual rainfall of 100 cm is required. Four major regions of rice cultivation are plains of North India, plains of Northeastern India, coastal areas, delta regions. Irrigated rice is produced in Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan. Development of dense network of canals and tube wells has made it possible to grow rice in these areas. Next question. Where are rabi crops mainly grown? Describe the climatic conditions required for their growth. Rabi crops such as wheat and other crops are grown mainly in states from the north and northwestern parts such as Punjab, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Uttaranchal and Uttar Pradesh. Climatic conditions, availability of precipitation during winter months due to western temperature cyclones help in successful growth. The Green Revolution has also been an important factor in the growth of rabi crops. Next question. Name three cropping seasons of India. Write their sowing and harvesting time and major crops of each season. Answer. Rabi, Gharif and Zaid are the three cropping seasons. Rabi crops or winter crops. These are sown in winter from October to December, harvested in summer from April to June. Important crops are wheat, barley, mustard, peas, gram, etc. Kharif crops are crops of the rainy season. These are all sown with the onset of monsoon, that is June to July, and are harvested in September to October. Important crops are rice, maize, millets, jowa, bajra, uh, tor, moong, urad, cotton, jute, groundnut and soybean. Zaid season, it is a short cropping season during summer months 
mainly between March to April and June to July in different parts of the country. Important crops are watermelon, muskmelon, cucumber and fodder crops etc. Next question. Name one type of agriculture which falls in the category of commercial agriculture. Write the main characteristics of this type of agriculture or write six characteristics of plantation agriculture. Plantation agriculture is a type of commercial farming. Characteristics of plantation agriculture. A single type of crop is grown on a large area. Plantation is carried out on large estates using lot of capital intensive units. Lot of migrant laborers work on these estates. The plantation has an interface of agriculture and industry. All the produce is used as raw material in the respective industries. The production is mainly for the market that is commercial agriculture. A well developed network of transport and communication connecting the plantation areas, processing industries and markets plays an important role in the development of plantations. Give an example of a crop which is commercial in one region and provides subsistence in another. Rice is a commercial crop in Haryana and Punjab, while in Odisha it is a subsistence crop. Write four points to stress the importance of agriculture in India or why is India called an agriculturally important country? Write four supportive arguments. Agriculture has been the backbone of the Indian economy. Explain the, strat the statement by giving reasons. Answer. India is an agricultural country because of the following reasons. Two-third of its population is engaged in agricultural activities which provide livelihood. Agriculture is a primary activity and produces most of the food and food grains that we consume. It produces raw materials for our various industries, example, cotton textile and sugar industry. Some agricultural products like tea, coffee and spices are exported and earn foreign exchange. The share of agriculture in providing employment and livelihood to the population continued to be as high as 63% in 2001.